With that, welcome inside the broadcast booth. Paul Severino and Todd Hollinsworth with you. Again, Marlins want to get a win. They need wins at this point. Hard to come by, especially against a guy like Jacob DeGrom. And Todd, last time out, uh, it was this close, this close, they almost got DeGrom. <laughs> well, sometimes it takes an ace in the opposite direction to get an offense going. I've seen it happen a number of times. You're, you're waiting around for the number five to get the offense rolling. No, you go up against the eight, ace, you throw everything out, you clear your head, you clear your mind, and you just constantly concentrate on getting yourself a good pitch to hit. DeGrom has been absolutely outstanding over the last few seasons. He's the best in the business. Uh, he is, you know, coming back from a little bit of an injury. We'll see how that, that plays. I, I don't think he would step on the mound anything less than 100%, so I've kind of excused that already. But there's been a little bit more velocity this year. Remember this, I, I, and I'll add this for Marlins fans. This is the first time the Marlins are getting, getting, are getting to see somebody for the second time this season. It's been just so much, you know, chaos uh, with everybody, you know, starting in some starters and then you got relievers and everything else that's been going on. They're actually seeing somebody that they've seen before. So maybe you can take something from that last start as good as it was for DeGrom, extract it and give yourself a chance to win a ball game. Tonight. A little blister issue in that start at City Field. Last start pushed back with some neck stiffness, but DeGrom back on the bump tonight. And for the Marlins, how about Pablo Lopez, the de facto ace? Doesn't quite qualify for the ERA uh, discussion right now, but he will soon enough. But it's at 225, and that changeup has been great. No, it's been absolutely outstanding. How about Mel Stoudemire foreshadowing the, the effectiveness of this changeup all the way back to spring training? He says it's coming. Nobody's really seen it, but I promise you it's pretty good. It's been great. You see the grip. You see the release point. Watch the action in the zone. The hitters, they think at the Mets lineup. It's Nimmo to start out in center field. Michael Conforto, J.D. Davis, then Dom Smith, Robinson Cano, Pete Alonso in the middle. Guillaume, Ramos, and Rosario rounding it out. And a strike at the top of the zone. So nothing in two on Brandon Nimmo. On base in 38 of his last 39 games. A lot of them have had a walk mixed in there. 19 walks in the left behind Pablo for tonight's ball game. There you go. Dickerson, Sierra, Brinson. That's your Marlins outfield, your infield. Anderson, Alvarez getting the start at short. Forsyth at second. Aguilar once again at first. And uh, Cervelli does the catching. Matt Joyce will DH. One away, and now it's Michael Conforto. Another one of those on-base threats for the New York Mets. This is a team that's now won two in a night. 98 miles an hour. He has been the king of velocity this year. This is the lineup he'll face. Magnaris Sierra in the top spot out in center. Aguilar and Dickerson go two and three. And Matt Joyce will clean things up tonight. Anderson, Cervelli, Alvarez, Forsyth, Brinson all there too. That's the cast of characters for the Marlins that hope to right the ship a little bit here. They have now dropped four. So it's the fifth start of the season for Jacob DeGrom, second against the Marlins. Again, scratched from his last turn on Friday against the Phillies, had a neck issue through his side session here on Monday, and he and the Mets decided that he was good to go. So again, his last start came Sunday afternoon, that last game against the uh, New York, uh, check that in New York, against the Marlins about a week and a half ago.